from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching the Cube and our multi-day coverage of the IBM Think Digital 2020 experience, the event experience, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Prasad Sankaran is here. He's the Senior Managing Director at Accenture Technology. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on, Prasad. Thank you for having me, Dave. It's a pleasure to be on. You're very welcome. So um, I'm looking at your bio here. You're responsible for the, the relationship with, with IBM Red Hat. So I'm interested in that. Um, and you're driving the Accenture Intelligent Cloud and Engineering practice. So we got a lot to talk about here. Uh, let's start with Red Hat. Obviously, it's probably the most important, at least new part of IBM. So you're, you're in the right spot. Um, What's going on with, uh, with, with Red Hat these days in your practice there? Oh yeah, so you know, Red Hat is a extremely important part of our practice. Uh, I'm very much focused on what Accenture does within the hybrid cloud space for our clients. And Red Hat with OpenShift uh, is you know, the most uh, powerful platform that there is out there today uh, in helping our clients both innovate in the new uh, as they expand in what they're doing digitally as well as move and modernize some of the equipment they have, you know, from existing estate. You know, I, when when the Red Hat deal was completed, I did a little breaking analysis, my sort of weekly editorial segment, and I said, you know, this this Red Hat acquisition, OpenShift, is a linchpin. And I went right there, right where you just went. It, it was all about application modernization and, and hybrid cloud, bringing that cloud experience to on-prem or cross clouds, um, and, and so that. It was always my take. Um, you know, there was a lot of sort of marketing around cloud generally, but but more specifically, it's a, to me, it was always about that application modernization. So I'm curious as to how your your clients have responded to that, and you know whether or not I'm sort of on the right track there. Yeah, I think there are multiple factors. I mean, if you look at just broadly the areas, I think there are three areas. Um, the first, as you correctly said, Dave, is uh, application modernization. So our clients are looking at the amount of technical debt that they have in their legacy systems. They're looking to you know, modernize the right parts of their legacy estate you know, while looking at the trade-off around the cost as well as the performance. So Red Hat and OpenShift really gives them the platform that allows them to do that and make, take their journey forward from an app mod perspective onto the clouds, you know, the various public clouds. The second area is actually in greenfield development. So as clients are building new applications, they want to be able to you know, build applications that they can run across you know, multiple platforms, whether it's private cloud or public cloud, and particularly in areas like Europe, uh, I think this is particularly significant and we can talk about that uh, in some more detail. And then the third area, which is emerging as you know, is, uh, is the whole area of edge and IoT. Um, which is going to actually move a lot of the compute away from the central clouds uh, into the into the edge, and uh, uh, you know, obviously, OpenShift is going to play a big part there as well, bringing all all the three parts of the enterprise, as it were, you know, the edge and the cloud, as well as uh, all of the legacy and private uh, estates that uh, exist today. So, to talk more about Europe, what's going on there? Is that a GDPR-related thing? Uh, a, a, a country, you know, in-country, keeping data in-country. What, what, what is the issue there? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I, you know, if you look at particularly financial services, but certainly other industries as well, the regulators are extremely focused on making sure that you know the right balance is being struck. Even if you're using public clouds, you know, they are going to talk about the amount of uh, public cloud usage that can be for every application, uh, the uh, various applications that have to be actually running on a private cloud estate. So in, in a scenario like that, you will really want to be able to build applications that you can run across you know, multiple different platforms. And you know, OpenShift gives you the answer to be able to do that, uh, to be able to you know, have a policy-based approach to where you know, certain workloads can be working on your uh, private cloud, uh, and certainly you can move it out to you know public cloud when uh, the need arises. Prasad, explain the edge angle. Uh, is that about bringing uh, uh, programmability or the cloud model to the, the, the data at the edge? <clears throat> Maybe you can explain that in more detail. Sure, sure. Um, and I, you know the edge and IoT and the Internet of Things uh, impacts different industries uh, differently. Um, you know I can talk about 
you know, since we mentioned financial services, let me bring up insurance, for example. You look at autonomous, um, uh, you know, cars and, um, you know, self-driven vehicles and so on uh, as they're going to change daily life. Um, what, what happens in those cases is that you want a lot of that data to be processed at the vehicle level, so at the edge, rather than a lot of processing happening across the network, you know, up at the central crowd and then coming back down to the vehicle. Uh, because the latency just doesn't allow um, these these sorts of applications to happen. Um, you look at multiple industries that are really being impacted by the edge. And so as that starts to become more prevalent and about uh, 50 to 60 percent of a lot of this compute moves off of the central cloud to various edge applications, what you really want to have is lighter versions of uh, these platforms running on those particular devices and the rest of it running either on your private or your central cloud. So you have to be able to use and move a lot of these applications, which are container-based, uh, you know, across these platforms. You know, Ginny Rometty, uh, now Arvind talk about uh, how only 20% of the workloads have moved to the cloud. It's the really difficult to move uh, workloads that are sort of the next, next wave. How do you see that evolving from Accenture's perspective? I think. I think you have, I mean, you, you're technology agnostic, right? I mean, you really, you know, you're not a purveyor of hardware or, or software. Um, and so how do you see, as a kind of a quasi-independent here, uh, how do you see that, that hybrid cloud, that, that cloud journey playing out? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the, we, we have the same number, by the way. I mean, we see about, when we talk to our clients and we've surveyed several CEOs and CIOs, um, the number we we arrive at is at about 20%, I think, uh, of workloads having moved to the cloud. Now, a lot of that has been SaaS-based. You know, they've taken a lot of functions that could uh, really be SaaSified, so to speak. Now comes the part around really taking portions of your legacy estate that you, you need to move to the cloud, um, whether you're going to do it as a PaaS or an IaaS, you know, doesn't really matter. Um, and then, you know, weave into that, the, the requirements around data privacy, around compliance, around high performance, et cetera, which might either take you uh, to a private cloud type of uh, uh, orientation or take it to various public clouds. So there's a lot of that work to be done. Um, so what we're doing with many of our clients is really working with them, uh, taking a lot of our tools. We have a tool um, that, uh, uh, that we use called MyNav, which allows you to really assess a client's legacy estate and figure out you know, what part of it that uh, really we should be modernizing and which are the partners really that we need to be working with to be able to modernize that aspect. In concurrence with that is all of the new development that's happening, all the cloud native development, which uh, is naturally going, going into you know, a lot of these uh, public as well as private cloud. So a lot of that work, uh, the next, you know, let's say 30 to 40% over the next few years, is going to be a lot of work that happens and that's going to be heavier lifting as compared to you know, the initial 20% that has happened already. Well, heavy, heavy lifting is kind of your area of expertise. I mean, think about Accenture, deep industry expertise, global presence, I mean, as does IBM. I'm, I'm curious as to sort of your relationship with IBM, um, what, what's the partnership like maybe you could describe sort of where you guys complement each other. I know you compete in certain segments, but where do you complement each other? Uh, you know, like you pointed out uh, earlier, Dave. You know, we are we are very much technology agnostic. Um, we have been uh, on a public cloud journey for the last several years, and really built our skills and our uh, you know support around uh, the, what the hyperscalers were doing in the market. Um, as hybrid cloud has evolved over the last uh, you know, couple of years, especially we see that OpenShift and Red Hat and IBM you know, play a big part in, you know, in this part of the journey, as well as IBM public cloud. We see you know, the use of IBM public cloud continue to increase in the market. So uh, all of these um, you know, companies, I think, play a very important role in what our clients want to do to take their journeys uh, to the cloud forward. So you know, we're trying to piece all of that together to, to have the right uh, you know, solutions to our clients. And really it brings together, I think, three aspects. One is um, you know, country specific requirements. The second is uh, the specific industry that you're talking about. And you know, third is technology. So really it's an it's a intersection of region, technology, as well as industry. It's something that you know, we're naturally good at. Um, we have several clients where we do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot, we have deep existing relationships 
And uh, we certainly partner with IBM very closely. Uh, we are the largest system integrator of uh, uh, all of uh, IBM software products globally uh, outside of IBM themselves. Uh, and we've been that uh, maintaining that status for many years. We've been doing the same on the Red Hat side. So as IBM and Red Hat come together, uh, I think at many of our clients, we're a very natural consultant and systems integrator for, for IBM Red Hat. We haven't talked much about multi-cloud this week. Um, I, I know uh, Stu Miniman, my colleague, has been hosting the Red Hat Summit and they're, they're talking a lot about it, but again, I want to tap your sort of, you know, the, your agnostic brain. You look at the landscape and you've got different suppliers coming at it from different angles, right? AWS won't use the term. Um, you know, Microsoft obviously has a good story there. You know, Google with Anthos. Um, et cetera, VMware wants its piece of the pie. IBM is kind of, to me, one of the most interesting with Red Hat, of course, uh, because not only does it have its own cloud, uh, but it's very aggressive around supporting multiple clouds. Um, it's, it, it seems to be you know, intent on doing whatever the client wants. Clearly that's your business. I wonder what you could, what you could share with us about your thoughts on, on, on multi-cloud specifically. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, multi-cloud is certainly where a lot of our clients are at. Um, <clears throat> they have started the multi-cloud journey, you know, you know, a few years ago. Um, they have gone with more than you know, maybe one hyperscaler. Although they have had you know just few workloads, perhaps in 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 multiple of them, and really focused on one of them. But as they start increasing the percentage of work that they're doing within the within the clouds, they start looking at a lot of these clouds for very specific reasons. Um, and most of our clients end up using two to three uh, public clouds. And when I look at the public clouds, certainly you mentioned all of them, AWS, Microsoft, Azure, uh, Google, um, uh, you know, with their GCP uh, product, as well as you know, IBM with um, IBM's public cloud. Um, and then with OpenShift really being able to run across uh, all of these public clouds allow you, allows you to actually design you know, microservices-based applications that are containerized and you can you know, pretty much run them across uh, whichever cloud you want. And this is where we really you know, work with our clients to really understand their need and to help them with uh, you know, the specific clouds that they want to be working with and uh, which applications really should uh, reside where um, makes sense for them. And like I said, uh, from a Europe perspective, you know, with GDPR, et cetera, uh, I think that journey is a little bit um, you know, further advanced than it is perhaps in other places, uh, other parts of the world, but we're seeing you know, much more use of multi-cloud, in addition to, of course, SaaS and the increased use of edge. So, Prasad, your role is global, obviously, not just yes, not just right. U.S., right? <clears throat> uh, uh, pan, pan the world, or is it U.S. and Europe, or? No, it is, uh, it's global, so it's uh, U.S., Europe, as well as uh, what we call the growth market. So, it includes China, then, is, is that correct? Or... That, that's correct, yes. Yeah, so, okay, so now you got Alibaba, you know, yeah. playing there. So that's yet another cloud. Um, Absolutely. And so, and what, you know, one of the roles that you play as a systems integrator and somebody who's, you know, trying to trust it is you help customers put, pick the right workload for the right, you know, infrastructure and make it work, obviously, and you help them de-risk. One of the things we've noted is, you know, going back to the 80-20 the or 20 has moved, 80 hasn't. It's the hard stuff. It's that a lot of that mission critical stuff hasn't moved and may may never move, but some of it will. It just seems to us that, you know, moving the mission critical workloads uh, is very risky. Uh, and so what you want to do is make sure that you de-risk that. You know, maybe keep it on. You know, if it's an IBM mission critical workload, maybe IBM's got ways to keep it safe in the IBM cloud and you know cross connect them, uh, etc. I wonder what your thoughts are on moving what has heretofore been hard to move workloads. Does it make sense to put them in the cloud or does it make sense to put a brick wall around them and leave them on-prem? I know it depends, but, uh, but, but maybe you could frame that for us. Sure, absolutely. So we have um, you know, a concept that we call digital decoupling. Um, and what that really entails is, is to take a look at these monolithic applications that are running you know, on the back end, and then to look at certain feature extraction that you know, you can, you can perform, take those features out, especially things that will give you access to digital channels, you know, uh, rewrite those applications, containerize them, and then be able to run them 
on uh, on multiple clouds and we've been doing that with uh, you know many clients uh, for example you know large um, hotel chains uh, where we've taken a lot of that functionality containerized it run it on public clouds and it's only the final commit after you go through the process of uh, figuring out you know what kind of room do you want uh, picking out the various features it's not till the final commit that that happens um, on the mainframe side so uh, feature extraction through digital decoupling, I think offers you tremendous um, offloading of a lot of those features as well as processing onto the public cloud. Certainly IBM is also looking at many and many ways in which uh, they can move some of these core functions as well onto their public cloud. So I think uh, the journey continues. Um, like you said, you know, it may not be ever that you have 100% of the uh, processing that happens on the public cloud and again, we have to take a look at the amount of work that there is, um, the risk reward, the cost that it will take, and you know, with the enormous amount of functionality that has to take place, uh, this is where we have to advise our clients on you know, the journey as well as the order in which uh, we achieve these. Well, the landscape, we talked earlier about edge, you're talking about multiple clouds, you've got on-prem, you've got mission critical workloads, uh, and you mentioned you know, containers, people want portability. Of course, containers are necessary uh, ingredient of that portability, but it's insufficient. And so you just see complexity increasing as we, as we proceed down this cloud journey, you got to secure those, 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 yeah. those containers and, and microservices sometimes aren't so micro <laughs> and you've, you've got to make them work across cloud. So it seems to me that uh, you guys and your, your clients get a lot of work to do, um, which, is, which is a good thing as long as you make the business case and it's adding value uh, to the organization. Yeah, absolutely. And then this is where, you know, you take certain functions. Uh, I think you have a lot of SaaS options, um, particularly around certain things that you're doing that tend to be, you know, commoditized, so to speak. Uh, certain other functions where you don't need perhaps the elasticity that the cloud offers, so you can have, you know, past solutions that you can build more quickly. But then you want other uh, solutions that need to be more mission critical, more resilient, um, and, and certainly more elastic, and that's where you, know, you look at you know, producing microservices, uh, containerized applications that you can really burst across you know, multiple um, clouds and so on. So these are all uh, part of uh, the architectures that we're building, designing, and implementing at our client. Prasad, where can I go to get more info um, on this whole topic? Uh, from um, you know, a hybrid cloud perspective as well as our public cloud perspective, you go to Accenture.com and uh, you do go to the cloud section. There's uh, a lot of information as well as credentials and white papers that you'll be able to access uh, and also gives you access to specific people that uh, you can you know, reach out to and contact uh, and get further information on what uh, we've been able to do. Very interesting conversation, Prasad. I mean, it's great to see you guys working very closely with, with IBM, I lo you know, love it. Two global companies, deep industry expertise, solving hard problems. So thanks so much for coming on the queue. Not at all, thank you so much uh, for doing this, Dave. You're very welcome and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante and it's our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the IBM digital event experience around Think 2020. We'll be right back right at this short break. You're watching theCUBE.